So nobody likes talking about their stool, but it's an important part of our bodily function and an indicator to our health. I have Brittany, one of our lead coordinators in our C. diff study here, to talk about stool. So Brittany, why do we care about our poo? Well, every body system is important and that includes our bowel movements. So it's really important for you to bring that subject up with your physician or your general practitioner, even though it's a generally taboo subject. I know I hate talking about my bowel movements when I'm at the doctor. So what are your suggestions and how do you help your patients feel more comfortable with that? So the main thing that I do is just first educating patients on what different types of stool they could experience and what each could mean or indicate and how they would describe that to their physician. All right, and I have some examples here of the different types of stool uh, that's laid out in the Bristol stool chart. Awesome, so let's start with this first one right here. Can you explain that one to me? Yeah, type one, one is typically separate hard lumps, um, kind of like nuts and they're, they're hard to pass. And then what about this one? Uh, type two is a little similar to type one, but it's a little more uniform. You don't have those separate hard lumps, but this one's a little uh, more formed and lumpy. So we would say that these two probably go along with constipation type symptoms. Right, exactly. A little bit harder to pass. And then what about this one? Uh, type three is like a sausage. It has some cracks on its surface um, and it's going to be a little bit easier to pass than the first two examples. And then what about this guy? Type four is usually going to be really smooth, um, like a snake. Uh, it's soft and also a lot easier to pass. So these are gonna be our easier to pass stools. Right. And then let's go to these right here. We're starting to look a little different. So this one similarly is easy to pass, but it comes out in soft blobs with clear cut edges. So what about this one? So next example we have here is type six. Um, that is going to be fluffy pieces with ragged edges. Um, it's a little more mushy than type five. And then this one. And the next one is what we would call type seven. It is watery, has no solid pieces, and is entirely liquid. So these ones are gonna be our diarrhea-esque abdominal discomfort type stools. Correct. Awesome. And then you did say that there's seven types of stool in the Bristol stool chart, but I do see an eighth sample here. Can you tell me what that one's for? Yes. So this is an extreme example of C. difficile. Um, it could look like this, like I said, in really extreme cases, but it could also look like type four all the way through type seven. Um, the things that you would also want to look for um, and is associated with C. difficile is an increase, increased frequency, uh, abdominal pain, bloating, nausea, and you may also notice undigested food in your stool, including if you take medications, um, like undigested pills. Wow, I didn't realize that there were so many different ways to describe my stool and how important it was to describe it correctly. Yeah, so it's super important to understand uh, the different types and how to describe it because um, it's really important to your health. Uh, like we said at the beginning, it encompasses overall health. So it could just point to a lot of different things. Um, and it's just important to bring up to your physician when you see them. Yeah, awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that with us. And again, you know, it's important to note that these are just examples. And depending on your signs and symptoms, things that are happening to your body can mean so many different things. And so it's really important to talk to your doctor. But I do hope that we've given you some tools on how to describe those symptoms for when you do decide to talk to your doctor.